Well, praise the Lord and good morning. It is still morning. <laughs> I am about four and a half hours late getting getting this uh, handful of purpose out today. And I do apologize. Uh, I overslept. I can't even fix it up. <laughs> I do apologize, but I am so excited to be here. And I just want to say welcome to a handful of purpose. It's so important that we understand that God has purpose in mind for us. He wants us walking in his purpose. And the Lord dropped that title in my heart last week. Uh, based upon the story of Ruth and Boaz. And you'll have to read it in Ruth chapter 2, verse 16, how Boaz told his workers to leave hands full, handfuls of purpose for Ruth to glean. And so this is what this is today. It's uh, me just sharing out of God's word in less than 15 minutes. Uh, so that you can be encouraged on your way. And so I know today's a little bit later than normal, uh, but it's okay. Hopefully your day is already off to a good start and that you begin you began it with prayer. Um, and I pray that the rest of your day will be blessed as well. Before we get into this brief devotional today, I encourage you to like, comment, and share this video or podcast if you're listening on my podcast, Empowered Heart to Heart. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're publishing this everywhere. Um, we are on uh, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and YouTube, and Twitter, and Instagram. And these uh, episodes of Handful of Purpose uh, are being broadcast specifically on Facebook, LinkedIn, and our YouTube channel and our podcast. And so uh, it's a great time to, to be growing in God and, and learning from his word. You know, there are so many voices out there. So many people have something to say about everything. Well, Jesus said that his sheep hear his voice and another they will not follow. And so it is my aim that you, uh, beyond hearing my voice, that you'll hear the voice of God speak to your heart through something that I share on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And so today, um, I am excited because uh, as is our growing tradition for A Handful of Purpose, it's birthed out of um, a devotional time that I, sh I spend with the Lord where he gives me what I call a power verse, other otherwise known as a Bible verse, and an intention word for the day. And so the power verse that God gave me um, is in Hebrews 4.16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And you probably guessed it. Our power word today is boldly, boldly. Now, for those friends of mine that may be on the shire side, well, we're about to jump in with both feet. And for those of you who may be more like me, pretty bold, we're about to get bolder. So what the Lord wanted me to share with you today is that being bold is so important, not only in our everyday lives, in our businesses, in our relationships, in our careers, but even in our walk with God. You know, the Bible uh, teaches us that the New Testament was written in Greek. And so a lot of times when we look up words um, in the Webster's Dictionary, they give English definitions. But you really have to dig a little bit deeper, a lot deeper actually, to get a full understanding of the meaning of some of the words because they may mean something totally different in the Greek um, because that's the original language of the text. And so uh, the word boldly means just as we suspect, it means blunt. It means openly outspoken. Um, bold is, is, is just a power word. And what is so interesting is that the Lord tells us in Hebrews chapter four, verse 16, that we can come boldly unto the throne of grace. You know, this is such 
um, a contrast to the Old Testament um, where uh, you had the high priest who was the only one eligible to go into the Holy of Holies, into the very presence of God once a year. He was the only one that could enter into that presence, but by a new and a living way, that is to say the flesh of Jesus Christ that was sacrificed, his body that was sacrificed uh, at Calvary on our behalf, we now have access into the presence of God where uh, just as on, on the day of his crucifixion, the veil that separated the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple was rent in two from the top to the bottom supernaturally. God did it because that symbolized our access to him. And so now the writer in Hebrews is saying that we can come boldly unto the throne of grace. We don't have to have a middleman. And please don't go left on me and, and think that I'm saying you don't have to have a pastor. This is not that. OK, that is not what I'm saying. What I am saying is you can access the presence of God for yourself. You can come boldly. You can be outspoken. You can speak up. You can tell the Lord what is on your heart. You can share your feelings and your hurts and your anger. Yes, I've prayed angry before. Yes, I have. I didn't stay that way, but I've gotten on my knees in times past and I said, Lord, this situation really makes me mad and here's why. And I just prayed my way through it. And by the time I got up, the Lord had me all straightened out and I was good to go. But you can be bold in your approach to God. Trust me, he can handle it. You can be outwardly and openly outspoken. You know, the Bible says that God calleth those things that are not as though they were. And if the spirit of Christ lives on the inside of you, you can do the same thing. You can be bold. You can speak the words that God has placed in your heart. You can speak boldly to him about the outcomes that you have, the expectations of him that you have. And so uh, this scripture is so important. And, and as I was studying this, my mind was just blown because I thought of other examples where people were outrageously bold in situations that many of us would think, oh, I would have never gone that far. You just went too far, Jacob, when you were wrestling with the angel and the angel, not another human being, the angel says to him, let me go for the day breaks in Genesis 32 and 26. And Jacob pretty much says, no, I won't let you go except you bless me. He had an expectation that was so powerful that he would not let go despite being told to do so. He had such um, a hope, such a desire, such a hunger in his heart. And in fact, Les Brown puts it this way, you gotta be hungry, as he says. You've got to make sure that you want that thing bad enough that you will not let go, no matter what comes, who comes, who goes. You can come boldly unto the throne of grace. Then I thought of a New Testament example about the woman and the unjust judge. Do you not know this woman went before the judge and said, avenge me of my adversary? Okay, that's fine. She made a one-time appearance, but no, she kept going back and forth. And back every time, back again and again and again, saying the same thing, avenge me of my adversary. She wore that judge down to the point where the judge says, you know what? I don't fear anybody, but, you know, I'm going to give this lady what she wants, because if not, her continual coming is going to weary me. I've got to give her her request. And I'm just paraphrasing that passage here, but Jesus ended up that passage by asking the people, and when the Lord comes, shall he find faith in the earth? So we've got to be bold. We've got to be bold in what we're expecting from the Lord. You know, if it lines up with the word of God, yeah, go ahead and ask for it. Go ahead and pray for it. If you're walking in obedience to the word of God, yes, believe God for it. Be bold. 
I have some some uh, affirmations written right here on my uh, bulletin board next to me of things that I am not just believing, but I am expecting God to fulfill by the end of the month. Yes, I am. Things that I am expecting God to do, and I'm being bold about it. I talk about it. I share it with my husband. I tell him, this is what's going to happen. All I know is this is going to happen by the end of the month. And so the the Bible says that we'll have whatsoever we say, right? So we better start speaking with boldness. And so we can come boldly before, unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We're going to get something in return for our outspokenness and for our boldness. It's so important. But you know, many of us in our walks with God and our relationships with him, we take a passive aggressive approach. And we wonder why we're not getting the answers that we need and that we're seeking. Let me explain what I mean. In 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 14 through 19, we find the king of Israel um, is uh, talking to Elisha just before Elisha passed away. And uh, he wanted some guidance about how to handle one of his enemies. And he wanted to know what to do and all of that. And Elisha told him, get some arrows and get a bow and, and shoot the arrow. And he shot the arrow once and he said, all right, you're going to get some deliverance. That's great. And then he said, take some more arrows and bows with you and shoot towards the east and, you know, shoot the arrows out of the window. And it, the Bible says that the king shot three arrows and then he stopped. Do you not know Elisha got mad at him? He said, why did you stop? He never told him how many times to shoot. He said, but you should have shot five or six times. If you had kept going, then you would have gotten complete deliverance. But no, you only shot three times. And so you're only going to get a limited amount of deliverance. And I'm just paraphrasing that passage. You'll have to read it for yourself. The point is when we are passive aggressive in our approach to God and in our prayer life, we don't get the full deliverance and the complete answers that we're seeking. God doesn't want his people to be passive aggressive in anything. He wants us to be bold. He said, therefore, we can come boldly unto the throne of grace. We've got to be strong. We've got to be bold. You know what it takes to be consistent in this last day? It takes boldness, boldness that I'm going to endure to the end. I'm going to be bold. I'm going to speak boldly. I'm going to be openly outspoken. Let me just say this and, and, and for the people in the back. Um, we're living in a, in a society where people have no problems saying what they want to say. Good, bad, right, wrong, or indifferent. They have no problem saying that, and they do it behind the Constitution, First Amendment rights of freedom of speech. Well, then why is it if we have this freedom of speech in the society and country in which we live, why is it when it comes to my faith and to my relationship with God and my prayer life, I revert back to a passive aggressiveness and I'm not bold in what I'm believing God for. I'm not blunt. I'm not openly uh, outspoken. Why do I revert back to a personality and a characteristic God doesn't want me to have? So it's important that we are bold. We are bold. What is it that you want God to do? What is your expectation of him? I dare you put it in the comments. What is it that you're believing God for? Because I promise you, he's more than able to do it. In fact, the Bible lets us know now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. And what is that power? Boldness, that bluntness, openly outspokenness that we have that we can put to good use to see God's vision come to pass in our lives. I promised you 15 minutes or less, and I've got about 10 seconds to go. So I encourage you be bold today and may the Lord bless you and I'll see you on Friday.